everyone. Welcome to another edition of Tink Talks. And today's edition, we'll, we're going to talk about fungi uh, with a fun guy. And that fun guy would be me, of course. Um, so let's get started. I have a number of specimens here, and the first one that we're going to begin with uh, will be um, these greenish, bluish colored specimens here. Uh, now, these guys, uh, they're called lichens. And what is a lichen? Well, uh, a lichen is a uh, mutualistic relationship between uh, two organisms, uh, between algae and fungi. And uh, this, this mutualism is a type of symbiosis, which is uh, organisms living together. And this type of relationship, as I said, is a mutualistic one in which both participating species in, in this particular example, they both benefit. So in, in uh, the case of a lichen, you have the algae, which are photosynthetic, producing carbohydrates, and they end up producing an abundance of carbohydrates, um, more than they need. And so the, the algae are, are doing that and producing the, the energy, utilizing the, sun, the sun's energy and converting it into chemical energy. Well, at the same time, you have a, a, a fungus living with the algae, and the fungi then can absorb those nutrients, the, those carbohydrates, that the algae are producing as they convert the sun's energy into chemical energy. Um, so this, this is, that shows the benefit of, for the fungi. Now, what's the benefit uh, for the algae that are growing here in this combination? Um, well, the fungi... Uh, produces a shield, basically, over top of uh, the algae. Uh, and that shield is called a cortex. And that covering that, that, that runs over top of the algae prevents the, the algae from drying out. Uh, so it, it provides a uh, kind of like an umbrella over top of it that's impenetrable to water. And so it enables the algae to continue surviving in conditions where if it weren't for the fungi, the algae would die. Um, so we have the, this, this win-win combination. And, and also, the algae then being within the and covered by the fungi, the fungi are above them, as I said, in the cortex, but they're also be, the, the fungi also grows below the algae too. And in order to enable it to adhere to a surface, like in this case, for example, in this a uh, dead piece of wood, or on the surface of this rock, um, the the fungi produce these structures called rhizines. And you can think of them kind of like roots that penetrate down into the wood or down into the small cracks and crevices of the rock. So it provides a holdfast for the algae uh, and gives them a permanent place to live. So it shelters the algae and it gives the algae a place to live, and the fungi benefit by absorbing the carbohydrates that the algae produce because the algae are photosynthetic. Now, you separate either of them, you separate the, the fungus from the alga, um, they could not survive. They could not survive independently, so they must live together. Isn't that a beautiful relationship between the two of them? Now, um, other facts about lichens. Well, they're the first ones to colonize exposed soil or rock. And so they're the first ones to move in, uh, say, whenever the environment has been cleared away of other plant matter and so forth, these lichens will be usually the first ones uh, to colonize. Um, they are very sensitive to air pollution, and so they become an indicator for air quality in an environment. So if there's a lot of air pollution, the lichens begin to die off pretty easily, especially in in some uh, forms of air pollution. They're very sensitive to that. So we say that they're an indicator species. An indicator species indicates something to us about the environment. How healthy is the environment, ecologically speaking? Uh, lichens serve as an indicator species. Now, how, how do... Now, I think we see how the lichen can, can get into this, this piece of dead wood here. Okay. So this is dead and decaying organic matter, and it's, it's pretty soft, and, and, and it breaks apart fairly easily. Um, 
And so we can see how the lichens can, can get down into this soft tissue of the wood. But on the other hand, we have the same variety of lichen growing here on this rock. And obviously the rock doesn't break apart very easily like that rotting piece of wood. So what do they do here? Um, you can probably figure that out. Think about it. Look at the surface of the rock. Very similar to the surface of this wood. Full of cracks and crevices through which the rhizines, which are the root-like structures from the fungus, can penetrate their way down in there. And then they can hold fast into the, into the rock, into those tiny little cracks and crevices of the rock. And so then these organisms can then survive on a rock, which in uh, under ordinary circumstances they'd never be able to. Um, so this, is a, this gives more variety and diversity to the areas in which these, these lichens can live. Now, as, as I mentioned, they, these cracks and crevices, and, and you can imagine you have these little rhizines penetrating down into the cracks. Over time, that's going to cause the wood and even the rock to physically break down because these root-like structures are penetrating down into the cracks and crevices. And as the lichen grows, the rhizines get larger and more numerous, and so they will break down the substrate that they, the lichen happens to be living on, in this case, dead wood or a rock. But they also can chemically break down these uh, materials as well because they produce acids. And when the acids get released, they can break down the minerals in the rock. And so this leads to the weathering of the rock, which contributes then to the soil and liberating minerals into the soil, uh, which is good for the health of the soil and the organisms that are living in the soil. Now, what about the growth rate of lichens? They're actually one of the, the slowest growing organisms on Earth. They grow extremely slowly, only less than a millimeter, and, and in some cases, some overachievers grow two to three millimeters in a year. So they're very, very slow growing um, organisms. And, and the way that they reproduce, they form these structures on their surface, which at this time of year, they're, they're just not producing them. Um, but on the surface, they turn kind of an, an orange color, and they rise up off the surface, they become dried out, and then wind currents will carry them away and then blow them elsewhere. And so this is how the reproductive cells get disseminated within an environment. So very interesting organisms here. Um, the, they serve as a food source. They're a major food source for, for tundra herbivores like reindeer or caribou. Um, and, and so uh, they provide a lot of benefit for those animals as well. So lichens are cool. I like the, the mutualistic relationship between the, the, uh, the alga and the fungus. Uh, it's, it's just really neat to see this. And, and they're, they're so easily seen too. You can see them on trees, dead or alive. Uh, on rocks, they're, they're growing in many, many places. So next time you see one of these, don't look at them and think, well, that's just some non-living substance. <laughs> it kind of looks like it might be. It's not. We have uh, two living organisms residing together in a mutualistic relationship. So next uh, I wanted to look at was a, a specimen that I got out in the mulch in our yard. And uh, this is called bird's nest fungi. Okay, so you can see all the mulch and the all the material that it's growing on, but I'll try to hold it up close to the camera here and hopefully it'll focus on it for you. And, and you can see the cup-shaped uh, fruiting bodies of the, the bird's nest fungi. And, and inside of these little nests, and hence obviously that's why they're called that, um, they will produce these structures. They, they're tiny little egg-shaped things, and they, they look like eggs in a nest. Well, inside of these egg structures are the spores. Um, and this, again, it's not the time of year whenever they're sporulating, um, so you can't see any inside of them. But what's interesting about those, those structures that, that contain the spores, the reproductive cells, is that um, they get disseminated out into the area around the fungi, by raindrops. So when the rain comes down and hits it at just the right angle, they will dislodge those structures containing the spores, 
and they will cause them to be kind of like splashed out, like there's a splash zone around the, the bird's nest fungi, and then new, new bodies of, of fungus can, can, can grow, um, and then they can spread out within uh, that, that area, in this case, the mulch. So they love dead and decaying wood, um, like you see here in mulch. Are they harmful to the garden? Uh, no, they're not at all, actually. They're, they're breaking down the mulch, and they're, like most fungi, um, they're decomposing it. And so they're unlocking uh, many organic compounds and, and, and distributing it into the soil, uh, and which is beneficial to the soil as well. They don't harm plants. They don't produce toxic substances that would harm them. Um, the only thing maybe that they could be a nuisance is, is that uh, remember the, the little eggs that will be inside the cups? Sometimes they're sticky, and which makes sense because they can, they can then stick to structures as the rain dislodges them and, and they land on the side of your house, for example, or something like that. And they may, if you have enough of it, it, it could look a little, I don't know, a little unsightly, I, I guess. I don't think I'd care about that myself, but uh, you know, some people might if there's a lot of it. Um, so that's that's the only you know, negative thing that I can really say about the bird's nest fungi. So it's it's kind of a cute fungus, if, if you can say that about a fungus, I suppose. So a uh, pretty cool one. And you, if you have mulch, you, I'm sure you have bird's nest fungi growing in it somewhere. So take a look. Okay, um, next. Uh, this is this will be the last specimen that, that uh, we'll take a look at today. Um, these are called bracket or shelf fungi. So I, I got a couple of specimens. Here's one. As you can see, it was growing on a, on a dead log, white color on the top. And this would have been the bottom side of it here. Okay, so there's that one. Um, there's, there are these specimens here, which are, are much smaller. And you can see uh, from this angle how they, they look like brackets or, or shelves. Uh, growing on this dead and decaying bark here. Um, this one actually was, uh, I cut into two pieces, so you could see the inside of it, but here's, uh, this would have been the, the, the top side of it, the side that was, you know, as, as I saw it, I was looking down on this side. Um, the underside of it looks like this. Now, these guys, they're, they're the fruiting bodies of the, of the fungus, and, uh, Fruiting bodies means that they're producing the reproductive cells. In this case, they're called spores, and that's how fungi reproduce. Um, those are their reproductive cells. Um, this side, you don't really, you don't see the spores, but on the underside, if you look closely and if my camera can focus, you see how it looks kind of fuzzy, and, it, and it, you can scrape it off, too. These, these are spores that are, that are on there, and, and um, it's rather soft on this side. It's it's definitely softer on this side, the underside of the of the bracket, than it is on this side. So uh, I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like in, inside there. Um, uh, not much. So really brown, and when I cut it, I cut it with a, a um, cross-cut saw, and it was just like cutting through wood, especially uh, down to this part. Once I hit here, um, it's a lot, uh, there's a lot more moisture in this part of the of the fungus right in here, and so it cut through it a little more easily. Um, but it's it's a very tough, you can hear, wood-like fungus. Um, and it was it was on a on a fallen tree, and that obviously was dead, and it was uh, decaying it and breaking it down and, and liberating some of its organic matter, uh, making it available then to other organisms uh, around it. Um, now, one thing that these are used for, these bracket fungi or shelf fungi, is what's called an artist's conch. Now, these structures are called conchs, uh, C-O-N-K. Um, now, one thing that I, uh, I mentioned to you, if you remember, you can scrape the bottom of this. Well, some artistic people, which I'm not one of them, um, they thought this would be a, a great palette for uh, making some beautiful diagrams and drawings, like this one here, where we have a large shelf fungus, and this would be on the underside of it, and this artist would uh, take some, uh, some implement, some tool, and, and scrape 
at different regions of the bracket. And, and the deeper you scrape, the darker it gets, and, and the less deep that the artist scrapes, they do a more shallow scrape, it, it's a lighter color, so it adds depth to it. As you can see in this picture here, there's areas of dark, and, and there are certainly light areas as well where the artist didn't even touch the, the base of this fungus. So really cool uh, use for this. Now, besides being an artist conch, do these shelf fungi have any other purpose? Well, the first question that students, my students always ask me is, can you eat it? <laughs> Will it kill me if I eat this? Well, um, most of them not, <laughs> uh, but some... Yes, not kill you, but have some toxic compounds in them. Um, they are used to make tea, so uh, not so much today, but they would take the, the woody part of it and grind it down and smash it in a mortar and pestle into a powder, put it in tea bags, and then brew it. And they would drink you know, fungi tea, I guess. Um, they've also been used for medicinal purposes as well. Um, the Chinese have used them for centuries as, as medicines. Um, another thing about their, their ability to grow, like uh, what, how are they affecting a tree species? Well, some are parasitic. Some of them will actually grow on a living tree, um, and then through the result of them growing on the tree, the tree actually dies, uh, and then the, the fungi can then continue decomposing the tree for many, many years to come. Others are what are called saprotrophic, which means they grow on dead and decaying plant matter and break it down and decompose it over time. And as I mentioned with the lichens about being indicators of air quality, these, these bracket fungi, these shelf fungi, are good indicators for invertebrate diversity. And you say, well, how would these relate to invertebrates like worms or, or insects? Well, they're easy to see in an environment. And so you walk into the woods, and, and you can see these very easily and quickly. And what, what ecologists have found is when these guys are in abundance, invertebrates are also in abundance as well. Um, so they're, they, it, it, it's an indicator for the diversity of the, of the invertebrates that happen to be in a particular environment. So where there are a lot of them, it appears that it correlates. Where there are a lot of these, these, these fungi, there are a lot of invertebrates as well. Many of them, their numbers are greatly declining because of logging and, and deforestation. So we remove the dead trees, and, and therefore the, the fungi don't have anything to grow on or to live off of. Um, so that's, that's an, an alarming trend with, with these species of fungi. We have lost many, many species over the years for those very reasons, with uh, logging and, and deforestation. So that's it for uh, today. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and, and learned a little bit more uh, about the different fungi that are, are growing, in, in, for many of you, in your own backyard, um, where we have all these different specimens that are available to us to enjoy. So uh, thanks for watching, and please don't forget to uh, like, subscribe, and share.